Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommate.wordpress.com. I hope that all of you had a lovely Mother's Day. I'm sorry that I didn't make many videos last week. It was a crazy week. Lots of unexpected stuff happened, but I'm back today. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was a little different than my normal topic, although it will tie into education. Now, if you have been on my Instagram page, you know that while I do post about the videos here and I post, you know, pictures of my family or things that we're doing, a lot of the stuff that I post is actually thought-provoking memes about different things that I really think that people should look into. And so last week I had shared a few pages of a book that I had been reading where I highlighted things that were really important, especially things that seem like they are really, really relevant right now. And it piqued a lot of interest. So what I thought that I would do today is that I would share with you the first chapter, not all of it, just some excerpts that I had highlighted of Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. If you don't know who William Cooper was, he was a former United States Naval Intelligence Briefing Team member, and he was privy to a lot of confidential information, top secret information, and he became a whistleblower. And he actually was eventually assassinated for his whistleblowing. But the very first chapter of this book is called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And that is really what I wanted to talk to you about today is just because I'll show this to you. There's so much stuff going on right now and so many things happening all around us. And I'm going to say that, you know, I actually started reading this book a while ago and, you know, full disclosure, I haven't even finished this book yet. And the reason for that is when I did start reading it, it was so eerily similar to what we were to what we were already going through, and this was before this pandemic. Um, but it was so eerily similar that it actually scared me to the point where it was making me anxious, and I didn't want to finish reading it at that time. So I put it down, and it's only recently that I picked it back up again and went back to look at those areas that I had highlighted or outlined because I thought that they were relevant and. It, it actually is pretty disconcerting when you'll see the things that we're going to be talking about. But now one thing that I do want to say is that when I post the memes on Instagram, I a lot of times I'll give my commentary or I'll say just a little bit about it. But the reason that I am posting those memes is because I am hoping to get you to look into these things yourself, to get you to research these things. Um, I don't want you to just take my word for it because I could be wrong. My whole concept of how I think that things are working could be wrong. Don't ever take my word for it or anyone else's word for it. What I'm hoping to do though is to inspire you to look a little deeper, dig a little bit because there's so much stuff that we are not being told. And this book is going to tell us about a lot of these things. All right, so before I get started, I just want to say that I am not going to be reading this entire chapter to you. I don't have hours, and I'm sure that you don't have hours to sit and listen to it. What I am going to do, though, is I'm just going to go over a few highlighted passages that I found to be extremely interesting, extremely thought-provoking, and I'm hoping that by giving you this little bit of information, this little inside look into what this book is all about, that you might actually want to take it out for yourself not or not take it out for yourself since libraries are closed right now but maybe want to buy it for yourself now I do have a newer copy of it this was written I believe in 1991 yes I have a, a revised well not revised is it revised yeah revised 2019 I have heard that the original copy actually contains more stuff I think someone said that you can get it for free online as a pdf but I'm not 100% sure about that but what I did learn just from this edition is enough for me right now. Little pieces, that's what I wanna say. Oh, before I even get started, I also wanna talk about, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about the secret government um, right now, especially like on Twitter. And a lot of people are making the assumption that the secret government is, um, 
that that Obama, Barack Obama, is in charge of the secret government. And let me just tell you that while he most definitely probably does work for the secret government, he is not in charge of the secret government. The secret government has been around for a really, really long time. And so this, the chapter that I actually stopped reading at, I keep missing it because I'm trying to look through my camera and at the book at the same time. But as you can see, this chapter is called The Secret Government. And again, it was written in 1991, and The Secret Government was around way before that even. So that's just one thing I wanted to clear up is that while he most likely does work for the secret government, he is not in charge of it. He is not leading it. It has always been there. So this is what Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars is. Actually, it says it right here. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay. Silent, we Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars is the doctrine adopted by the Policy Committee of the Bilderberg Group during its first known meeting in 1954. You can look this up. The Bilderberg Group is an actual group. They meet yearly in Europe. It's a group of the elite. They have politicians there. They have scientists there. They have people from the media there. And they always have an agenda of things that they want to talk about. So this right here, it says that it was found in 1969 and it was in the possession of naval intelligence. And so this is actually a, it says an introductory programming manual, operations research. And I want to make something very clear to you that this isn't about programming a computer. This is about programming people. It's about programming society. So I just want to start out down here where it says security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. So keep that in mind as we're reading these things. You know, I talk about social engineering on my channel all the time. I talk about how school is social engineering, and it's just one aspect of social engineering, and it does come up in this chapter. But this isn't just something that we have recently begun to talk about. As I mentioned, this book was written in 1991, and yeah, even back then, people were aware of what was going on. So now here, let's just move to here where it says energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy. And social science, theoreti theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems. Mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science. And the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. That's a common theme that you're going to see going through this, um, what do they call it again? A programming manual. So a common theme in this manual is to keep the public ignorant. And I've said that all the time. It is easier for them to control us. So starting here, all science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, wealth, of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. So we know who that worthy few is. That's that top 1% that we're always hearing about. And so what I want you to notice is that they think we're stupid. And so a lot of times people will say things, you know, like, why are they doing things right out in the open? If what they're doing is wrong, why are they doing it out in the open? Because they are working under the assumption that we are ignorant. And sadly, for the most part, they're right. Most people do not see what's going on. It could be right in front of their faces and that works to their advantage. 
So what they believe is that since the general public is so stupid and they are, are not, that they should be the ones to control everything that we do. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of the society must be brought under total control. I'm wondering if welfare has something to do with that. I.e. must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age, I'm thinking school, before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. And I think that a lot of us could argue that that is school, especially with all the before school programs they have going on, all the after school programs. School is government daycare. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class, meaning that the inferior class has no idea that the education that they're getting is inferior, or is not even education at all, if I can add that in. With such an initial handicap, even bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintaining some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. So that's who they're thinking of. They're thinking of themselves. We are cattle to them, and you will see that later. It specifically says cattle. Let's move down here. Now, what they're talking about, let me just read up here too. Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of junctioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing. Instead of a chemical reaction, explosion, originating from bits of data, instead of grains of gunpowder from a computer, instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnate instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet, it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with daily social life, i.e. unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon, and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. What is that weapon? Well, it's social engineering. That's what they're doing to us. That's what I've been trying to sound the alarm about. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but because of the technical nature of the silent weapon, they cannot express their feeling in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they, they do not know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. Thankfully, more and more people are coming together. I think that, you know, when they created social media and when they created, you know, like YouTube and Facebook and all these things, they, they had intentions of using those against us. But what has happened is that we, you know, the cattle, we have started to come together. At least some of us have. And... We're starting to use these things against them, and that is actually helping us to organize. Although I also have to say that it's also helping them to spy on us and to know which ones of us do know what's going on. Anyway, when a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. thought this was a very interesting quote. Give me control over a nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. And that's by Mayor Amschel Rothschild. And we know that the Rothschilds are definitely, they're the elite, they're in the Bilderberg group, and they are one of those 1%, one of those people that are controlling us. Let's just move on to here now. 
If the people really cared about their fellow man, they would control their appetites, greed, procreation, etc., so that they would not have to operate on a credit or welfare social system, which steals from the worker to satisfy the bum. Since most of the general public will not exercise restraint, there are only two alternatives to reduce the economic inductance of the system. One, let the populace bludgeon each other to death in war, which will only result in a total destruction of the living earth. Two, take control of the world by the use of economic silent weapons in a form of quiet warfare and reduce the economic inductance of the world to a safe level by a process of benevolent slavery and genocide. Did you hear that? Benevolent slavery. So these people actually think that they're doing this for our own good. They actually think that this is a benevolent humanitarian effort to save the world. Okay, I have so much stuff um, highlighted. I hope that I'm going to be able to get through all of it. All right. So here we have a table of strategies that they're going to use. And while all of these strategies, this whole thing is interesting, I thought some of them really stuck out to me. So it says, do this and to get this. So do this. Keep the public ignorant to get less public organization. And we've seen that. But like I mentioned, thankfully, we are starting to get more organization. But unfortunately, the percentage of people who are awake to what is going on is still tiny. It's minute. And we really need to keep growing this movement. And it's getting harder and harder with all the censorship that we see going on. And that is all part of keeping the public ignorant. Do this. Create preoccupation to get this. Lower defenses. If you're always preoccupied doing other things and not actually paying attention to what's going on, so much easier to get things past us. Do this. Attack the family unit. I've talked about this so many times. To get this. Control of the education of the young. Well, there you go. Do this. Give less cash and more credit and doles. To get this, more self-indulgence and more data. So that's why, you know, they, they give credit. And I'd even say like the, the bank cards and everything. Because if you, I think it's easier to spend money that you don't actually have in your wallet, like cash. And on top of that, they're getting all that information about the things that you're buying. Do this. Attack the privacy of the church. To get this, destroy faith in this sort of government. They don't want us to trust the church. Um, do this. Social conformity. Well, we especially see that going on now with the masks and the social distancing and telling people that they can't see their families and can't get together at church. So do this. Social conformity to get computer programming simplicity. We're so much easier to control if we all look the same and if we all do the exact same things. If we obey. Do this, maximize control to get this, minimum resistance to control. That's something else that we see going on right now. We have our governments basically telling us how to live our lives like never before. And yet we're seeing very little resistance to this. Yes, I'm thankful that we are seeing resistance, but for the most part, people are just doing whatever they're told. Do this, the collapse of currency to get this. Destroy the faith of the American people in each other. So diversion, the primary strategy. Experience has proven that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic systems principles on the one hand while keeping them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand. And I'd have to say that besides school, social media has been fantastic with that and our entertainment industry. Okay, so this is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, providing a low quality program of public education in mathematics, logic, systems design, and economics, and discouraging technical creativity. Common core, anyone? Number two, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence, and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by A, Unrela unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape by way of a constant barge of sex, violence, and wars in the media. 
especially the TV and the newspapers. B, giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought and depriving them of what they really need. Three, and this is a huge one right now, rewriting history and law and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. This has been going on in so many ways right now. Our constitution is being trampled on, people are rewriting history left and right, and our education system is bringing up children who have no idea what the truth is. You know, it just reminds me of the memory hole in the movie 1984. If something doesn't fit their narrative, they completely take that part out of history. They shove it down the memory hole and it's never seen again. The general rule is that there is profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer the solutions. Well, that's the, the Hegelian dialectic, folk, folks. That's what I've been talking about all the time. You create the problem, there is an intended reaction, and then you offer the solution. Well, not us, but these people. Okay, diversion summary. Media. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. And I'm sorry to all you sports fans out there, but that's one of those things. There's sports, movies, um, TV shows, gaming. All of these things are being used to completely distract us and to not have us thinking about things that matter or to educating our, yourselves. And this is why I'm even bringing this to you. It is so important that you educate yourself. And that's something that I think a lot of homeschooling parents are realizing more, is that education doesn't stop when school ends. And when you're a homeschooling parent, you have to keep educating yourself. And when you find yourself learning things like this, it's just a never ending rabbit hole of more things that you have to learn. Schools. Keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade level. I'd say, say that's pretty accurate, although some of it is pretty raunchy, but they're probably perfectly fine with that going to sixth graders and, and younger. Work. Keep the public busy, busy, busy with no time to think. Back on the farm with the other animals. You see that? We're animals to them. Consent the primary victory. So how do we let all this stuff happen? Well, uh, we let th these things happen by ignorance, by not paying attention, by the distraction. And, you know, I've talked about social media several times, but to be honest, you know, that is also part of the reason I think so many of us have a hard time educating ourselves. And that's even with me, because even though I have bookshelves and bookshelves of books that I want to read yet, it takes me forever to read them because my mind is so conditioned to these short YouTube videos or to scrolling through Twitter or scrolling through Instagram that I, I even have a hard time concentrating long enough to just sit and read and learn things. And this is something that we need to get ourselves out of. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment. A good and easily quantified indicator of harvest time is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government. Well, sounds familiar, doesn't it? So the political structure of a nation, dependency. The primary reason why the individual citizens of a country create a political structure is a subconscious wish or desire to perpetuate their own dependency relationship of childhood. And I just want to add in here that this really does remind me of a lot of the people who just absolutely refuse to believe that their, the politician that they support could ever do anything wrong. Like they will 100% back them up no matter what. Or there are even people out there that, that think that the government could never do anything to hurt anyone. And I think that it really is rooted in this. Simply put, they want a human God to eliminate all risk from their life. Pat them on the head, kiss their bruises, put a chicken on every dinner table, clothe their bodies, tuck them into bed at night, and tell them that everything will be alright when they wake up in the morning. 
And you know, we see all that going on right now with the shutdown. So many people out of jobs, but you know, right now you've got people who are on unemployment and with all of this extra money that they're getting from the government, the $600, I think, they're actually earning more money than a lot of people who are actually out there working. So they're content. They're having the government do everything for them. They're putting the food on the table for them. And this is exactly going to, con this is going to contribute to the control that the government wants of you. This has always been about control. This public demand is incredible. So the human God, the politician, meets incredibility with incredibility by promising the world and delivering nothing. So who is the bigger liar, the public or the Godfather? This public behavior is surrender, born of fear, laziness, and expediency. It is the basis of the welfare state as a strategic weapon, useful against a disgusting public. Yeah, they think we're disgusting. And they're using the welfare state against us. They keep people in their system as slaves by having them depend on them for everything. Okay, now let's just go over a little bit of what they want of the family. We talked about how they want to dismantle the family. And these are just some of their ideas. I'm not going to read all of them. Um, again, because I'm hoping that this is just going to encourage you to get out there and get this book. I'll leave the link for the book in the description box below. Because this is something that you need to see for yourself. And you need to read all of it. And you need to come up with your own conclusions. I don't want you to believe things just because I'm saying them. Anyway. So let's look at the father. The man of the household must be housebroken to ensure that Junior will grow up with the right social training and attitudes. Have you heard of the beta male? That's your beta male. Mother. As the transition becomes more difficult to manage, now remember they're talking about mothers here, the family unit must be carefully disintegrated and state-controlled public education and state-operated child care centers must become more common and legally enforced so as to begin, to begin the detachment of the child from the mother and father at an earlier age. Inoculation of behavioral drugs like Ritalin can speed the transition for the child and they would be mandatory. And down here, we're cattle to them. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains. And so this mindless school of jellyfish, father, mother, son, and daughter, become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. So they don't feel bad about any of these things that we're doing. They think that we have, they think that we have it coming to us because we're dumb. We won't open up our eyes. We won't figure things out. We're letting them get away with it so they think that it's perfectly fine. They are living off of our money. We are their slaves. We have to work and work so hard, some people can barely get by. Some people can't get by at all. While in the meantime, they are living off the fruits of our labor. And it's really about time that more and more people start to realize this. So that is just my quick, um, just little overview of Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Again, I really suggest that you get this book. I have not read the whole thing. I said that earlier. But you know what? The, it's just too much of a coincidence for this to be off. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube has disabled my comments. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.